Right, welcome back to the next video in the DLP experiment. My name is Devin Adams. I'm a foreign net instructor here at uh, Dynamic Worldwide in Tempe, Arizona. And the last few videos, we've had hit and miss successes with the DLP sensor. Um, but the first one that we did was just file name matching, and that is the least intrusive. In other words, it's not going to take up as much uh, resources on the Florida gate. And then we saw how we did do scanning the file type. Now, that probably wouldn't work well with our uh, predicament where we're trying to protect a certain file that is an image. Now, um, just to kind of refresh you here, we're trying to to make sure that this priceless Mona Lisa, right, doesn't leave our our network, and we we circumvented that in a couple of different ways, and that was uh, by changing the file name, right, uh, because we had a very very basic, you know, if it matched the actual name or anything Mona to block it. And then we did also file type, which is JPEG. Well, can you really block all the JPEGs that get uploaded or downloaded? Maybe. That's going to be up to you. Uh, the last one that we're going to talk about, I'm going to actually split up into two videos because I'm pretty sure I'm going to butcher this. Uh, we're going to configure fingerprinting. Now, what fingerprinting is going to do is take this share me, right, this, which will be a file server, and we're going to point the FortiGate to it, and it's going to make signatures based off of the hashes of these files. And it even does it by chunk size, too. So if for some reason only part of the file gets altered, um, the different chunk will still pick it up. So we're going to uh, essentially configure the FortiGate in this video to um, scan files in a share, and then also put a different sensitivity level on it, and then apply that to our firewall sensor and uh, yeah it should give us the most uh, control over the DLP options because it's actually creating a, a signature for it but then again it can be the most resource intensive so um, but then again that might be the trade-off that you need in your in your situation so uh, now in the actual uh, file description or the video description I'm gonna put the links on the 40 OS website that I found the examples of how to do this and once again I'll, I'll probably screw it up but the fingerprinting part of the DLP feature does have to happen in the CLI so I am going to go to the FortiGate directly here alright to set this up and I'm gonna log in okay now the very first thing that we need to do is to create sensitivity levels so uh, let's go to config uh, let's see here DLP and then we have a FP sensitivity. And if we do a show here, by default, there's three levels that are in the FortiGate. So that is private, critical, and warning. Now, why am I mentioning this? Well, we're going to set up a scan that's going to go ahead and either scan everything within a directory, like my share me folder, or we can do different scans within the same directory, but matching different patterns like everything with PDF or everything with JPEG okay and then give it a different sensitivity level so it pretty much watermarks the file and saying hey this is sensitive or hey this is critical or hey this is warning but why I wanted to show this to you is because you can rename uh, these levels of sensitivity to actually match up your your security policy that you actually classify data so if you use things like top secret or or uh, instead of critical, maybe uh, confidential or copyrighted, right? You can you can do that here. So, just for an example, just for the fun of it, I am going to create a new one called Mona. No, I don't know why. Just so we can we can see it. Okay. <laughs> so, all right. Um, oops. Let's go ahead and make sure that it it wrote it. So, uh, config. DLP, all right, sensitivity, show. So we have a new one called Mona, no. So I'm going to now go to my config, DLP, and we're going to do a fingerprint doc source. Now this is setting up the actual Samba share that it's going to go out using SMB, which is a window share. And I'm going to scan everything in that directory as Mona no. So, alright, and like I said, this is probably what I am going to butcher. 
So first I'm going to give it a name. All right, so I'm going to say uh, share me, okay? And then we go ahead and start setting the parameters. So server type, which is funny because uh, Samba is the only type. <laughs> so I don't know why they give you options. And then we'll set the server itself to the IP address. Now, what IP address are we talking about? Well, the machine that has the file on it or the file share. So I'm just going to pop over here real quick and and because I really don't know off the top of my head what IP address I gave it. So IP config and it looks like we're at 10 0 1 10. All right, cool. Great. So let me get back there. All right. There we go. So it's going to be 10.0.1.10. Okay. And then we have to set the username because obviously not anyone can just you know, log into shares. So now that will get hashed. So don't worry. I know. Yes, I'm using password, but I can do that in a testing environment. So uh, let's see here. Set file path. Now this is going to be the share me just like that. All right. So and I can confirm that by just going to my Windows machine again, going to network. All right. Okay, so you see the path here. The management PC1 will be replaced by the IP address, so it will be a WAC and then the share me. Okay, and uh, just for good measure here, let me get back here. No, that should be it. That should be it. Okay, so and then we're going to set the file pattern to everything dot everything. So I, I'm saying, you know what? anything in that share okay and then the sensitivity level oh I'm getting tab happy here all right critical private warning Mona no see how it recognized the the level that I gave it so all right then set period oh now this is saying how often do I go out there and rescan the share so how often do your files change so I'm just going to do uh, daily, all right, oops, daily. And then you can even set the time of day on the hour. Maybe we'll do it for uh, maybe people leave around uh, uh, 6 o'clock. We'll, we'll do it something that's not intrusive, like 1 a.m. or something. All right, there we go. Set the time of day, minutes to zero, all right. And now it should run this every day at 1 a.m. To, to fingerprint it. So do we have subdirectories? Oops, set. Uh, oh, it is scan. Sorry, scan subdirectories. Okay, enable if we had multiple directories. And there's, there's a couple of other options that you see in the guides here too. And one of them is set remove deleted. So if this is enabled, if, the f if a file has been deleted out of the share, it deletes the signature. Now, if you put that to disable, okay, it will keep it in there for a bit. And then there's a certain, you can read up on this, there's a certain level of changes or modifications that it keeps the, the past hashes just in case someone has an older copy of the file as it tries to leave. So, and then we'll do a set keep modified as enabled and that will be you know keep a certain amount of history of, of, of the changes in there um, that should be it that should be it so I don't know uh, if that's gonna work until we test it now fingerprinting is not going to show up in the GUI right until we at least configure it once in the CLI once it's in the CLI it will appear in the GUI. So let's go ahead and do that. So uh, we'll do a config uh, DLP sensor. All right. And if we do show, we should see our our couple of our different sensors here. So we have our default one, and then we also have the Mona Lisa. So I'm going to do an edit with the Mona Lisa, and then I'm also going to do an edit for. Oops. Or do I do a, 
Oh, I cannot remember. Actually, it should be config. Oh, it's config. Uh, or do we give it a name? No, 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 that's right. We just have to do a config filter. My bad. Like I said, guys, I don't use the CLI that often. Okay, so here we go. Set uh, the protocols. Oops, it's barking at me. Oh, now I do the edit for. Jeez, that's a lot of verbiage. Sorry, guys. Do a little show there. Okay, now we can do do the set. And there's a the a, the example in the comment fields of, of where I got this. But I want the HTTP GET, the HTTP POST, and FTP are the main protocols I wanna I wanna make sure it scans. All right, I'm gonna set the filter by fingerprinting. All right, fingerprint. And then set the FP sensitivity to Mona No. And I'm going to set my my action to block. All right. Okay. So. All right. Hopefully that will work. Now, if it doesn't work, I'm probably going to have to manually uh, tell it to scan this share. And that's when we start going into the diagnose test application um, commands there to get the DLP daemon to, to execute it. I might have to look that up if it's not successful. So, um, but let's, let's just try it first. Okay. So uh, let's go to our firewall now and let's type in our super secret credentials there. So, and then let's go to our security profiles and let's go to data leak prevention over to Mona Lisa and we should have a there you go there we go all right and we now have this file fingerprint Mona no block okay so you at least need to do the first one with the uh, what you call it the first one through the CLI. Okay. All right. Wonderful. So also we have this one here where it's, where it's log only, log only. All right. So everything with Mona should have been blocked by the way. All right. There we go. And also the sequence number, you think you have to do that through the, um, the CLI for right now. I'm just going to hit delete. That's not a big deal. All right, because I can just recreate that. So any files that miss the sensor altogether, I will still do a log me um, just so I can see it just in case. All right, so. All right, now in theory, it should take those files and, and create signatures for them. So it doesn't matter if we, we rename them or anything, it should still be able to, to pick them up. So um, I don't know, let's go test it out. So I'm gonna stop the video there just because configuring the DLP sensor uh, was one and one video and then testing it, I will break it up to the last video. So in the next one, we'll go ahead and we'll test our fingerprinting and see if it works. So, all right, thank you very much. See you in just a bit.